You close your eyes. You take a deep breath of pungent spring air and you start to run faster and faster towards that hurdle a few meters ahead of you. When you get close, you increase your speed. And when you reach it, you fling your body out over the hurdle and you fall hard. Or at least that's what you do if you're me and you're about 14 and you're at a junior high school track and field practice and you think nobody's really watching right now, I'm gonna give this a go. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering, A, who is this person? And B, why is she telling me this kind of pathetic story about her <laughs> junior high, high school track and field experience? And I promise that story is going to be relevant in a little bit. Um, as Dan said, my name is Jessalyn Sabin. I'm a biology instructor here where we are taping at Hibbing Community College. And I'm 26 years old. I left the Iron Range for about six years, and then I came back here. I was born and raised out in Side Lake. And you know, I didn't really expect that I would be back here. It's funny, there's this expectation that young people leave, but there's not really an expectation that we come back. But I'm really glad I did. I love living on the Iron Range. Now, since I've been back, there's been something that I've been becoming aware of, and it's a challenge. It's something that's both concerning for us, but it's also an opportunity. In the next 15 years or so, we're going to see more people retiring and leaving the workforce than we're going to see entering the workforce on the Iron Range. Now, this is going to affect the quality of life of all of us. When that talent and ingenuity and skill leaves the workforce, that makes our communities less vibrant and that takes away from our culture and our economic opportunity. So what do we do about it? I'm a member of a group called Regen. Our aim is to attract and retain young, young at heart, new, talented, and diverse people to our workforce. And we try to do that in three ways. Now the first way that I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about, or the first thing I'm gonna talk about is gonna sound a little, it's gonna sound kind of flimsy, but it, it's really something that's very important. And that's social roots. When you've ever been involved in something, any sort of group or, or community, what's the one thing that makes you stay, makes you keep going? I'm gonna bet you're gonna say it was the people. It was the people that you were spending time with. And so our aim is to try and bring people together for fun events, social events. And so we throw happy hours and video game nights and we go to Giants Ridge and, and have some fun for the day. It's a casual situation where we can just connect. I have a good friend who moved here from outside of Chicago. She's a curator at the Minnesota Discovery Center. She's brilliant, she's fun. And I gotta tell you guys, for the first year she was here, she only met a handful of people. That's a shame. We don't want to lose people like her who are talented and skilled and have all kinds of good ideas. We want to keep those folks here. So the first thing we do, we get them connected with other people. And then once we have them connected, we, we come to our second goal of Regen, and that's going to be we want to get them involved in their communities. Because when they're involved, they care about what happens to that community. And so we connect people with volunteer organizations, with arts groups, 
with boards, commissions, anything that's happening on the range. One of our own Regen board members, Wayne, Wayne Kangas, is the chair of the Hibbing Chamber of Commerce. What better way to get a fresh perspective and fresh ideas at the table when we're making decisions about development in our communities? So then the last thing we like to do is education. We like to educate people about this demographic transition of some people moving out of the workforce, trying to bring people in. And we do this through bringing in speakers and panelists. Last year, we actually had some local, uh, local celebrities, local panelists that talked about different issues. And we brought in the theater of public policy, which if you haven't heard of them before, they're kind of like, whose line is it anyway? They listen to your, your serious discussion about issues on the range, and then they make fun of it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny. Through the lens of comedy, you can see how the things that sort of create murkiness in our conversations, we can cut through that. We can look at our common goals and our common, our common desires for the area. And we also try to educate the young people in our area about the opportunities in their backyard. This year, we piloted a mentorship program at the college, and we connected young mentees with mentors out in the community. And it's been fantastic. And they can see that they can get a job here doing things that aren't necessarily within our main industries. I'm going to share my favorite story. I got permission from my student, Dustin. He wanted to be a gunsmith. And so we actually hooked him up with Range Tool. They're over in Gilbert. It's a custom CNC company. And one of their products is firearms. Now, Dustin's ex-military. He's got connections at the local firing range. And he's enthusiastic. And so Range Tool got this fresh, energetic new person to come there. And he worked part time there. He still works part time there. And he got the experience that he needed and is now still there, continuing his education to become a gunsmith. Win win. So, social roots, we want to work on that, make sure people want to stay, get them involved, give them a sense of agency in the community and we want to educate folks on what's happening. So I'm going to bring you back to my pathetic hurdles story. Young people are a source of energy. Young at heart people are a source of energy. We need to tap into that. They will charge straight forward towards that hurdle, all out, fling their bodies over, and I have to say, that's not always the best approach. So we need them to work with people who've been doing good. And when we bring people that have been doing good things for a long time with people that have fresh energy, I think we're really going to see things happening. So my pitch to you guys today. I've got two things. And they're things that we can walk out of this room and do right now. It doesn't take a stimulus package. It doesn't take a big, massive plan. It takes us. The first thing is positivity. I know it sounds kind of Pollyanna, but let's talk about the great things happening here on the range. Let's talk about our great education our wonderful outdoor resources, our affordable lifestyles. Let's focus more on what we could become rather than what we don't have. Second, inclusivity. Next time you go to a meeting or bowling or out to coffee, invite someone that you don't know very well. Maybe you just met them. Maybe they just moved into the area. 
maybe they've been here for 20 years and you just haven't managed to talk to each other yet. Because when everybody's at the table, when all faces are present, we're going to get a diversity of opinions and we're going to get a better perspective on how to move forward. And young people, this has to start with you. I'm calling you out a little bit. I think young people sometimes feel a barrier to entry in big projects. And I think it's because sometimes we don't feel qualified or maybe sometimes we don't feel experienced enough. And that's fair. We all feel that way. But I'm going to wrap this talk up by uh, probably proving how much of a millennial I am because I'm going to I'm going to quote a Harry Potter actress. <laughs> Emma Watson plays Hermione in the Harry Potter series. And she recently gave a talk at the United Nations about gender equality. And she touched on this feeling of maybe not being 100% qualified or experienced in certain realms. And I really, I really like what she said. She said something and it's, it stuck with me. She said, you have to ask yourself, if not me, who? If not now, when? Thank you. Nice work, Jessalyn. <laughs>